Okay, round two. I think we are going to keep this hand. We don't have a white source, uh, which is a problem for the two white cards we have in our hand, but we do have a blue and a green source, and we've got a decent curve. We have a two-drop creature, so I'm going to keep it. Uh, we will be needing a black and a white source at some point, but ideally, that happens. Opponent is also keeping at seven and playing first. Okay, Scoured Barons to start her off. Raider Spoils off the top. Not the ideal draw, but we'll take it for now. Seven ways to get a black source in our deck. So, should be okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, should be okay. Windscarred Crag, all right. Hey, Black Source, nice. Uh, we don't need it just yet, so I'll bust out the, the Highland game here. So now we're just a white source away from having all the colored mana we need. I guess next turn I probably should fetch the Polluted Delta, start deck thinning, up our chances of finding one of our white resources. Alright, Morph. Kintree Warden, not too bad, especially with the Raider Spoils. Um, I think we're actually going to pop out the Kintree Warden. Problem is, what I want to do is set up for Raider Spoils, is what I'm trying to do. So, I'm actually just going to play the Kintree Warden regular, because otherwise I can't unmorph it and play Raider Spoils next turn. As odd as that may seem. Alright, another morph. And no land. That's pretty nice for us. Certainly okay with him attacking here. Since I can regenerate. All right, so we'll find our black source. Gonna untap, draw another black source, all right. Let's uh, play a forest, let's drop our raider spoils and see if he's going to let me draw cards. I presume he's going to trade with the Kintree Warden, which by the way is also okay. Taking out a morph for a Kintree Warden is a fair exchange in my mind. He's trading off both. All right. I'm also okay with this. Could be one of them's the Watcher of the Roost or, nope, Krumar Bonkin and Ponyback Brigade. So perfectly okay with that exchange. We still can cast an Abzan Guide if we draw a white source or Armament Core if we draw a white source or morph the Abzan Guide if need be. Found his fourth resource. And he's delving. So probably a Sultai Scavenger is my guess. Okay. Still tolerable. 
our uh, Abzan Guide can trade in a pinch, and that's actually a good draw too. So we're going to do our Abzan Guide face down, and we're going to just cast another Kintry Warden. And next turn, having Awaken the Bear up with Raiders Spoils plus Regen. We've got some very good options at our disposal. All right, hard cast the Kintry Warden, and then pass. It's up to five resources now. Let's see if he keeps back his Sultai Scavenger. Nope. So he's got a follow-up play, which is still okay. It means we're, we're likely going to be able to play Awaken the Bear for some potentially good value. Rough Rider. That's actually all right. I think we still slam into that. Um, I could morph, but then I can't bounce. I'm actually short a resource on that, but that's okay. We're still going to be slamming into our opponent here. And uh, I guess I will two for one myself if I swing with the Abzan Guide. But I have five mana up, so it's still kind of a good bait. And uh, even if I two for one myself, I'm going to be drawing a card at that point. So I am still going to slam in with the Abzan Guide and hope that the five mana is enough to make him fearful of it. Like it's a, I don't know, a pine walker or something. But I don't think holding back my morph at this point is a good idea, as it uh, definitely telegraphs. It sends a weird signal if I'm just attacking with Kintry Warden and leaving back my morph. So I have to confidently attack with my morph, despite the fact that I will have to two for one myself. If I, uh, if I, if he does block our morph with the Rough Rider, but getting the Rough Rider off the board also seems kind of important, and drawing a card is also very beneficial for us. All right, he blocked the one I wanted him to block, which is actually kind of nice. So now we get to not only awaken the bear, draw a card, but we get to regen as well. Definitely paying a life. Sultai Charm is actually very reasonable since it uh, at least kills Sultai Scavenger if we need it to, but uh, potentially kills something more harmful if he plays that. So hopefully it's a monocolor guy. All right, very good. So now we're just going to Sultai Charm, destroy that. Draw another card.
getting very good value here. Let's see if we can't draw a land. There we go. So now we can morph our Ice Feather Aven as well. And we are pretty threat heavy at this point. All right, Chief of the Edge. Let's see if he's still thinking about racing. Very bold, very bold. Loxodon's not bad. I think we just uh, bounce his Chief of the Edge. Uh, I could do Right of the Serpent, but I actually like bouncing more because then I can morph out my Loxodon as well. So let's uh, let's bounce his dude so he can't even block. Send in with everything. Draw another card. And uh, let's drop Loxodon. And then we'll pass. All right. So, uh, Mardu. Saw some good cards. Pony back. Rough Rider, Bond Can, Double Scavenger. Uh, so he's got good flyers. Um, he strikes me as a deck that's likely aggressive. <clears throat> likely aggressive. Um, so I feel like the Dragon Scale Boon is going to be much better against him since um, I can then defensively block the Rough Rider. Um, because he could, you know, eliminate one of my blockers, and then I pay four mana and untap for a different surprise blocker. I um, feel like that would work. Basically, Dragon Scale Boon's better in the matches where I feel like my opponent's trying to beat me down as quickly as possible, and Awaken the Bear's better in matches where I'm, uh, I'm the aggressor, or I've got the better aggressive uh, plays. Um, anything else I think is worthwhile? I'm not sure. I think we're going to keep everything else the same. I could bring in the parapet, but I need to see more creatures. I, basically, I just saw... Well, he does have the Chief of the Edge. Hmm. Um, he could have an aggressive start for us against us, but I'm still not sure if the parapet is exactly what I'm looking for in this matchup. Could cut the other Awaken the Bear for another defensive creature. Archer's Parapet's not so good against both his Scavengers or his Mardu Rough Rider. So it's not a very attractive choice. Basically, it's just good against his Chief of the Edge. I think we're going to keep it like this for now. Okay, game two. He uh, took a little bit of time in his sideboard, so could have come up with something. This is a great hand. Don't have a blue source yet, but we have our other three resources, a two drop, a three drop. It appears very good to me. Highland Games seems like an excellent two drop in this matchup. That was also a good draw. Okay, Skull Hunter for no value is always a welcome sight. I don't think we're going to trade with him because I'd rather get my Skull Hunter value. Um, all right, so we play Sandstep Citadel, swing with our Highland game. 
and then drop the Skull Hunter. If he cracks back with everything, we have potential for Raider Spoils, which should help in this race a little bit, especially with the incoming incremental growth. I may actually do the Hera Specs next turn, setting up for an incremental growth, because I feel like the incremental growth is going to be the ultimate uh, ace in the hole in this matchup. Uh, although Raider Spoils drawing the extra card is also very beneficial. But uh, yeah, making my opponent discard here, I'm kind of I'm pretty comfortable with our board presence. Opponent hasn't shown a red resource yet, which is also nice. All right, so we get in with Highland Game. We drop our Skull Hunter. Um, I guess it does sort of feed into his uh, Sultai Scavengers, but getting rid of a Rough Rider, I would say, is pretty indicative of our opponent not having a red resource. All right. A little bit of extra damage there with Defiant Strike. Uh, ooh. I even... You know what? I forgot we had Sultai Flare. That is pretty fantastic. So even though I could cast Raider Spoils here, I think it's it's just so much more of our to our benefit to just swing here and play Flare. I, uh, Flare avoids Smite the Monstrous. Him destroying Flare is very good for us. So this is just, I think, going to work really well. He could do Suspension Field. We haven't seen it out of him yet, but it is a very real card. The incremental growth next turn is going to be pretty tremendously powerful. If he swings into my Flare, I also don't really care. Um, this could be a Bondkin. I'd, you know what? I'd still make the trade. I would still trade it off. If he swings with both, I will drop the Skull Hunter. But if he just swings Morph, um, forcing him to use his turn to unmorph it and trading and gaining four life is still of better benefit than just taking five and keeping my flare. All right. So now nothing. So now we're going to incremental growth for a tremendous amount of value here. And I think what we want to do is one here, two here. Actually, I think what we want to do is one here, two here, three here. So um, that way uh, the Highland game dies easier than the Skull Hunter, which is going to be good for life gaining. And just a snap concession at that point. This is a Sage Eye Harrier. All right, well... Uh, deck played very well for us, uh, especially in this game where we got early life gain trader and life gain dude again. Um, not to mention with the incremental growth, we were going to uh, be able to gain life off of our Skull Hunter dying as well. So, very good. Uh, deck is playing phenomenally well for us. We'll see you in round three.